Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Monday, July 25th, 2022, Maplewood City Council meeting. You know, this last week was a very exciting week in Maplewood. We opened up our brand new fire station at County Road C and Hazelwood, and I have to say it was a wonderful event. Uh, I have had lots of comments and emails as I've been out in the community about what a wonderful fire station it was. I want to compliment Chief Mondor and uh, Chief Beardeman for all of their work on that station. You know, the planning that went into that, I mean, to the small list of details uh, it just really was very impressive and the I think it was probably about 200 people that showed up and you know details even so far as I really like the opportunity of cutting ribbons in our community when we have new places that open up well Chief Mondor had a brilliant idea to uncouple <laughs> a fire hose and I did get a little tutor session ahead of time so that I didn't blow it when I was working on it and he stood right next to me but it was really a wonderful event and you know in my remarks I there were so many people to thank I had three pages of notes and it was all focused on people to thank uh, including the council including our, our uh, senior leadership team in terms of every single staff person city manager Coleman uh, so many people our EMS task force everyone really contributed to that and I think it really is a testament to when we make up our mind to do something and when we collect the data when we listen really well to what uh, the data shows us when we listen to what people need when we use advisors and we work together as a group it's amazing what we can get and I think uh, you know I don't know if this, the fire station is prettier in the morning uh, in the morning light or at night when it's all lit up it's actually very beautiful so I would encourage everyone go and check out our new fire station at County Road C and Hazelwood it is up and running and it is stunning uh, Chief Bondar, you know, maybe I'll call on you and have you, do you want to just make a couple of comments about it? Because this was a really big thing in our community. It's not, I don't remember the last time we built a building like that. I hate to put you on the spot. I didn't tell you I was going to do that ahead of time. <laughs> Sorry. No, thank you, Mayor Abrams, uh, members of the council. Yeah, Thursday was a, a huge moment in the Maplewood Fire Department's history. We've spent almost a decade planning for that and there's mm -hmm. several stakeholders that were involved in that and I think you alluded to it it's not possible without support from the community support from the council support from all of our senior management team and staff at every level to make sure that that uh, vision became a reality and so we're our staff are extremely grateful and excited to be operating out of our new facility and certainly anytime someone from the community that wants to come and see it that didn't have the opportunity we'd welcome them to swing by at any time it's great thank you thank so you. much for that and thank you, council members, for those of you who were able to attend. Uh, it really was a very fun event. So uh, really an exciting time in our city. Thank you, everyone, for that. Let us start with the Pledge of Allegiance, everyone. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk Sint, would you do the roll call for us? Councilmember Cave? Here. Councilmember Juniman? Here. Councilmember Knutson? Here. Councilmember Villa Vicencio? Here. Mayor Abrams? I'm here as well, thank you. Council members, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I move approval. Second. Moved by Cave, seconded by Juniman. The motion to approve the agenda. Is there uh, any um, discussions? Councilmember Juniman. Um, council presentations, one last time, National Night Out. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Okay, then uh, I have something to add as well. Uh, this is of interest to the council uh, uh, concerning a, an upcoming meeting with, this, with St. Paul College about uh, um, our scattered site home uh, project. Anything else anyone would like to add? Okay, then hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Let's move on to approval of our minutes, the July 11th, 2022 City Council minutes. Is there a motion? I move approval. Second. Moved by Cave, seconded by Juniman, the motion to approve the minutes of the July 11th, 
2022 City Council meeting. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then all those uh, uh, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Go on to appointments and presentations. Uh, the council calendar update. This is yours, City Manager Coleman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Abrams, members of the City Council. The uh, council calendar update is meant to just give you an idea of what's coming up at our uh, next council meeting uh, meetings and workshops. So um, Council Member Juniman is going to talk about National Night Out, so I will not do that, but it is coming up. Um, on August 8th at our workshop, we will have an update on the scattered site housing program from the students at the University of Minnesota Humphrey Institute. I also have an update on our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives from city staff. And then a first a conversation about the 2023 budget. On August 12th, we will have a special council meeting to canvas the primary election results, and that will be at 4 p.m. here in council chambers. August 22nd will be our second uh, budget workshop, um, on the, and that will be at, uh, I don't know what time yet, we'll kind of see how it goes on the 8th. And then September 12th, that city council meeting, um, it sounds like a long way off, but it's really not that far away. We've got a lot of work to do between now and then, and that will be the adoption of the 2023 preliminary budget. Uh, in terms of things that we're working on, we do need to get a report back to you on the lead pipe replacement programs and some of the uh, resources that are out there for us uh, with regard to the St. Paul Water Utility Systems upgrades. And um, we do have some information that we'll be putting that together for you. The second item was the homeless encampment updates. And I just wanted to make you aware that I will be working with Mr. Mondor. He gets uh, weekly reports from the county, and I'm going to ask him to uh, pass some of that information along with me, which then I will share with all of you in the FYIs on Friday. Uh, with that, I don't have anything else to add unless you have some issues or topics of interest for us to look at on your behalf. Councilmember Cave. Um, cannabis. I talked to uh, city manager a little bit about this, and I know with the new law going in July 1st, this is something that I know she said she started looking at, and I just wanted to um, encourage our staff to look into for mm -hmm. licensing and different things we can do in our city, and I know it's just preliminary right now, and so I just want to get the ball rolling on that. Is everybody on board with look? getting some information put together. I have been talking to Attorney Beatty about it, and there is a lot of information out there. So we could start an education process and see where we land. I've also talked to uh, Mr. Beatty about seeing what other communities are doing. So we, we don't necessarily want to be the first ones out of the gate, but okay. we do want to get the conversation started and get ready for that. Yeah. Did you see I think that's a good idea. I know that the league has a lot of mm -hmm. information about it mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of different facets to this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. yeah. Mayor? Council Member Um Over the weekend, it was on the news that uh, Robbinsdale has uh, basically <laughs> frozen. Yeah, put down the walls oh. frozen for, for a year long enough to mm. go through all the processes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Madam Mayor, Council, a number of cities uh, are doing just that. I, I think ultimately, and I, and I have discussed this with the city manager, mm -hmm. ultimately I think the city's regulatory authority is either going to be zoning or licensing or some combination, mm -hmm. probably more licensing, perhaps uh, tobacco or alcohol are sort of the models, but we don't know yet. And so a number of cities, and I've drafted several ordinances for that purpose, uh, to declare a moratorium to give everybody sort of a time out to figure this out. As you probably know, this kind of got dropped on everybody. Um, I was unaware of it. I think most people were unaware of it until, boom, it was July 1st, and suddenly this was a thing. And so a moratorium seems like, for many cities, a good tool because that's to call a halt you prepare a study and figure out what, if anything, you want to do. I think that, for many cities, has the advantage of, first of all, as the manager said, letting sort of being able to see what other cities are going to do. Uh, and secondly, it's very likely, I think, that the legislature will probably take another bite at this next year and try to clean some of this up. So we may have a better sense of 
what we need to do, if anything. So yes, a moratorium is certainly an option. Thank you. Okay. So come, any council members, uh, let's hear what you have to say about asking staff to research this for us and have Mr. Beatty do the work. I hear C's yes. nodding heads. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. I, I believe we all have consensus, yeah. so there you go. We'll add that onto Thank our mm -hmm. list. Thank you. Uh, moving on to council presentations. Council Member Juniman. Well, this is it. This is the last time you'll hear me saying it for this year um, because National Night Out is a week from tomorrow night, the 2nd of August. And um, I am not aware of what the cutoff date is for registering a party. Does Mr. Communications dude know? I thought it was yeah, today. The deadline is tomorrow night oh. at midnight. Thank you. Okay. Tuesday, tomorrow night at midnight, so you can still register your party. Thank you. Mayor, I just wanted to follow up with a quick message to the community is my first national night out as a council member I, I figured I needed to get to many of these uh, to visit people and I thought I would follow a Maplewood ambulance uh, mm -hmm. instead of looking at the map we ended up in little Canada <laughs> so just want to let everybody know that you know you should kind of be on your own and <laughs> use the map <laughs> yeah use the map that's provided <laughs> I think that's the dig that he was talking about on Thursday. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I had something that I wanted to add, kind of an update for the council. I d went to the um, house over in North St. Paul that they built in conjunction with uh, District um, 916. And it was really quite amazing. And North St. Paul is actually going to be doing two more houses just like that on one double lot. And so they're going to continue to work with 916. While I was there, I spoke with a representative from St. Paul College who participates in these housing projects. And St. Paul College, uh, this uh, the woman that I, I was talking with, the college actually did all of the cabinetry. And so they participate in this, and she would very much like to partner with the city of Maplewood on, uh, with our EDA on um, scattered site housing um, uh, and taking, well, it's what we've been talking about for a long time, mm -hmm. taking our abandoned houses, the houses have been foreclosed on, uh, and then um, working with those houses, either rehabbing them or tearing them down, building new houses and getting our community getting those houses back into uh, um, family use. And uh, it'd be great for the neighborhoods. It'd be great for families. So anyway, um, a meeting is set in the next two weeks with uh, EDA President uh, Knudsen, myself, City Manager Coleman, uh, Mr. Thompson, and the representatives from St. Paul College. So after we talk with them, I'm sure we'll be coming back and updating you on some exciting prospects. So right. it's something nice to look forward to. Okay, we have no other council presentations. Moving on to the consent agenda. I move consent agenda item number G, one through seven. Second. Moved by Cave, seconded by Juniman. The consent agenda items G1 through 7. Is there any further discussion? Council Member Juniman. Uh, I think we should highlight number, numbers 4 and 5, and I have a question to ask about 6. I would like to highlight number 7. Okay, so let's start with number 4 first, which is the resolution to accept yeah. donations for the Youth Scholarship Fund. Is that City Manager Coleman? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, this is a resolution to approve a donation from um, Raising Canes and Mick Mart Ice Cream for $54.21, the other for $50 for our Youth Scholarship Fund. And these funds were proceeds from fundraiser days sponsored by each of the company. Uh, they were both pre they were present at the Touch a Truck, and then Raising Cane had an event at a Maplewood location to to donate money to our Youth Scholarship Fund. Yeah, that's hey. really nice. Very it nice. is very nice. Yes. How about uh, resolution to accept a donation from Craig Mickelson for Memorial Tree? City Manager Coleman. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the Council, Craig Mickelson is making a donation to purchase a memorial tree to be planted at Maplewood Heights Park. He did this in honor of his brother, 
Um, his brother walked there often for many years with, as a children. They appreciated the park. His brother recently had passed away, and Mr. Mickelson is donating uh, $295 to cover the cost of a Kentucky coffee tree to hmm. plant at the park. Oh, nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want people to be aware that people do nice things like this for our community, and it's also something that people can consider if they want to make a donation for some reason. Very good. Thank you. Next, we have uh, the conditional use permit review for White Bear Meadery. Uh, Mr. Thompson, this is your topic. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, so back in uh, 2021, the City Council approved a, a conditional use permit for the meadery to open um, on a site um, in Maplewood. And it, the, the permit is up for its uh, review, uh, which is our just standard process of reviewing the, the CUP, the use, and whether it's in compliance. Um, there have been uh, really two issues um, ongoing at the metery. The first is related to the construction is not complete. Um, I think we listed in the staff report some of the construction that is required to be complete before we can issue a certificate of occupancy. Uh, without a certificate of occupancy, they're not allowed to have members of the public present um, on the property. So that's one issue. Uh, the second issue is um, there's been an ongoing um, observation of goats on the property. And we have notified the owner and business uh, owner of the property and the business owner is the same person multiple times uh, that our ordinance does not allow uh, goats on the exterior of the property. Back in February of this year, they requested a reasonable accommodation under a reasonable accommodation ordinance. And um, after review, the city denied that. I think there was a typo in the staff report. It was actually April 11th of this year is when we denied that. Um, I will tell you after we've regularly been inspecting the property to determine if the goats are in compliance or not. Um, sometimes they are not present on the property or not present on the outside of the property. And sometimes they are present. Uh, we went out there today. Uh, there were goats on the exterior of the property, which is in violation of our code. Um, after talking to the city attorney today, I think what we'd recommend doing is we can send them a final notice of violation of the goats and ensuring that they are on notice that in writing that they are not allowed to have them on the exterior of the property. Um, there are some provisions, as you know, that we amended the code recently to allow for them to be inside uh, a building, provided that they meet some of the state and federal animal welfare regulations and, and, and whatnot. But that's not the case because they're on the outside. So upon sending that, we would give a 30-day notice of compliance. And then I think what we'd recommend is the council uh, extend the review for 60 days. I think the report says six months. But I think we should uh, do that again in 60 days. Um, and we can follow up with you of the notice and um, any action that has or has not been taken. And if it's still in violation, we can discuss with you and the city attorney next steps um, on the conditional use permit. So that's the update on, on the meter itself. Councilmember Judiman, did you have a question about uh, this? No, I have a comment. Um, I thought that the rest of the council would maybe be just knowing. I already talked to Mr. Thompson about it. That apparently um, there have been instances of private parties being allowed in and meat has been served. So he's using the building without having it completed and without meeting the standards for his CUP. So um, Mr. Thompson said he and our attorney will look into it. But that's not what you're supposed to do if <laughs> if you haven't completed what we asked you to. So the goats aren't the only thing they're in violation. So can I ask for a clarification maybe from Mr. Beatty? Uh, in terms of number six, uh, what I hear Mr. Thompson suggesting is that we modify the CUP for 60 days, or would you prefer that we with just simply pull it off the agenda? I'm concerned about some of these safety issues that I'm hearing yeah. about, mm -hmm. and some of the safety issues that were outlined uh, uh, by Randy Johnson, our building official. Mr. Beatty, what is your recommendation on how to handle this? Uh, Madam Mayor, Council, uh, we're not recommending that you modify the CUP. What we're recommending is that rather than waiting the six months to bring it back, that it be brought back sooner than that. Mr. Thompson's recommendation is 60 days, so basically two months. That gives staff an opportunity to discuss the matter. Uh, some of these things have just come up, and Mr. Thompson was on vacation last week, so we have not had an opportunity internally to discuss it. As Mr. Thompson said, it also gives us an opportunity to send an explicit letter to the property owner outlining all the violations and giving him an opportunity to 
uh, rectify those and bring those and bring that back with a status report to you at a time of your of your choosing uh, with some recommendations as to what we where we go from there and of course that will depend on whether they are by then in complete compliance or whether there are still uh, outstanding issues. Okay, so then in terms of voting on this, would it be your recommendation that we vote on, I would prefer to vote on number six separately. And so oh, that would oh. take a friendly amendment. Mr. Beatty? Yes, uh, maybe I misunderstood that part of your question. If you're talking about, uh, essentially you're talking about adopting the rest of the consent agenda, I think, in one motion yeah. and dealing with this one separately. So yes, you would amend the motion that's on the table now to adopt everything other than this item and then make a separate motion on number six, which could be in line with uh, what staff is suggesting, i.e. bringing it back in 60 days. Thank you. We'll come back to that. I want to go through number seven and then we'll come back to number six and I will make that, f that friendly amendment. Uh, number seven, uh, we have, uh, this is uh, just, yeah. just to highlight. Chief, one quick question. Chief Mondor. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Um, in a project this size, generally speaking, when it's done, there's a lot of punch list items. So I'm just wondering, you know, um, what's what's the state of the of the building relative to things that need to be finished or repaired? It, it appears to be um, well done. Um, yes, uh, Councilmember Knutson, Mayor, members of the council, we are still working through our punch list. Um, as you can see of the original budget, we're significantly under what was anticipated for the contingency for change orders. Um, and we still do have a, a line of items that we're working through that some of them are, are costs to the contractors that are part of their scope of work. Uh, but we're getting towards the end of, of sure. issuing change orders. But hopefully by September, the entire project will be close to being wrapped up. Um, as we go through and discover things, now that people are occupying, mm -hmm. uh, we continue to work through those things. But we're getting close to the end. I just want to offer my congratulations for mm -hmm. uh, the big projects I've done, like the hospital and stuff like that. Man, it's, it's sometimes you just want, especially during a period of increased costs and all that, you've done a great job bringing this project in mm -hmm. uh, under budget. Yep. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have discussed all of the highlighted items, and I will make a friendly amendment to uh, uh, withdraw number six, the conditional use permit review for White Bear Meadery, uh, and we will vote on that separately. Second. So, Moved by Abrams, seconded by Cave, a friendly amendment to withdraw uh, G6 and to vote on that separately. So that would mean that the motion before the council would be the consent agenda items G1 through 5 and number 7. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Okay, now in terms of number 6... I will move to approve the CUP review for White Bear Meadery and review again in two months. Is that correct, Mr. Beatty? Yes, that was okay. yes Madam Mayor, Council. Recommendation from staff was in 60 days. So second meeting in what would it be September. Okay, so 60 days. Yes. Thank second. you very much. Move. Second. Thank you. Moved by Abrams, seconded by Knutson. Uh, a motion to approve the CUP for White Bear Meadery and review again in 60 days. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you very much. We have no public hearings and no unfinished business tonight. We now move on to new business. This is a hearing concerning repeat nuisance service calls, an appeal by Emma Norton Services, 2161 Van Dyke Street. Uh, Lieutenant Michael Duga, you are going to be making the initial presentation. Um, thank you. If you just want to take a seat. What we're going to do is we are going to have Lieutenant Duga make a presentation, 
and then we are going to hear from representatives, well, excuse me, we'll hear Lieutenant Dugas's presentation, and then there will be an opportunity for council members to ask questions of Lieutenant Duga, and then followed by representatives from Emma Norton Services. You'll have an opportunity to address the council, and then there'll be an opportunity for the council to ask questions, and then the council will then have a discussion. So, Lieutenant Duga, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Members, City Manager. Um, and tonight we are here to have a hearing regarding excessive calls for service appeal, which is the first one that we have done. Um, the repeat nuisance calls for service ordinance was implemented in 2019, and the purpose was for protecting the public and to discourage repeat nuisance calls by imposing fees on the property owners to cover the extraordinary costs of responding to those um, excessive nuisance calls. Emma Norton Services um, has requested this hearing in front of the council because of two specific cases in which fees were assessed. The two cases that we are hearing today are police case number 22 zero one three nine six nine and this um, report occurred when juveniles from Emma's place went to CVS right on the corner of B and White Bear Avenue and were um, attempting to steal items they had previously been trespassed from CVS for um, disorderly activities as well as theft um, the juveniles left that area and as while doing so stole a shopping cart officers arrived in the area located the juveniles identified the juveniles all of which is on police body camera and we have confirmed their identities and they do reside at Emma's place <clears throat> um, the second incident is police case number 220-13682 um, officers were called to Tumble Fresh Coin Laundry, which is located near Starbucks on the corner of Wiper Avenue and County Road B. Um, juveniles from Emma's place broke two gumball machines and stole contents. Um, while on scene, they were kicking the gumball machines and attempting to disable surveillance cameras by climbing on a counter and physically removing them and throwing a basketball at the cameras. The cameras at Tumble Fresh are extremely high quality, making identification of the juveniles easily done by members of the police department. Um, the suspects, the juveniles that live at Emma's place, um, then observed a vehicle pull into the parking lot, and when they saw the vehicle, they fled the, they fled the scene. Um, the video was shared with the property manager of Emma's place. These nuisance bills, each for $250, were mailed on June 24th, and the appeal was received on July 1st. These two cases are part of an ongoing public nuisance caused by the residents of Emma's place. As of July 18th, the building at 2161 Van Dyke had 20 nuisance violations, and the building at 2165 Van Dyke had 12 in the previous 12 months. Both of these addresses are for Emma's place. Um, these numbers do not include several nuisance violations that were dismissed, nor do it, does it include um, violations that have since been issued. So since we've received this appeal, uh, five additional nuisance letters and bills have been sent to Emma's place, which include harassment, assault, criminal damage to property, burglary and theft. Um, since the report was published, additional incidents um, have been reported to law enforcement <coughs> uh, regarding juveniles there. Um, I want to be very clear with the council that um, it is primarily two units at Emma's place that are causing the problem and that the vast majority of the residents um, do not cause us overwhelming concern. Of the um, 11 violations to the 2165 building, 
seven are related to a single unit. And of the 20 that belong to 2161 Van Dyke, 10 are directly related to a single unit. The address of uh, the problem unit at 2165, um, they were in the eviction process for months. They have received multiple extensions. They were again supposed to be out July 1st. That has not happened. And as of today, they are still residing there. The problem unit in 2161, um, we've been advised that their lease will not likely be renewed, but there's no eviction process currently in progress. Um, those two problem units alone represent over 16.5% of all nuisance violations in the last 12 months in the city of Maplewood. And to give you an idea, the entire city of Maplewood has had 102 nuisance violations in the last 12 months as of this morning. Does council have any questions that I might be able to answer? Thank you for your presentation. Council Member Knudsen has a question for you. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, when I read that last paragraph, I look at uh, harassment, assault, criminal damage to property, burglary, and theft. If these juveniles were adults, would these be considered felonies, and where would they be? Um, the harassment would be a misdemeanor. Um, the assault was part of a theft slash robbery at the mall where a juvenile assaulted a loss prevention pr person. The criminal damage to property was a juvenile throwing a rock through a passing vehicle's rear window, um, which is then directly related to the amount of the window on what level offense that would be. Um, burglary is a felony, and I believe the theft was a misdemeanor. The theft was what I didn't hear? A misdemeanor. Okay. So essentially, if these were adults, they'd be dealt with with some, some kind of incarceration or detention? That would be an option, yes. Any other questions, Council Member oh, Anyone else have any questions for Lieutenant Duga? Uh, Council Member Cave. Um, just a comment. Um, thank you for again coming up here and giving us a detailed report. It's really helpful. Um, this has been ongoing for way too long. Um, but all your information here really helps us see the picture of what's going on. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Villa Vicencio. Uh, did you, when you said the percentage of calls, did you say 16 or 60? 16.5. 16.5. Correct. And that okay. is, those two units represent 16.5% of all the nuisance violations that we've issued in the last 12 months. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Lieutenant Duga? Okay. Thank right. you. If you want to thank stick you. around, because Absolutely. we might have some other questions too. Ms. Brownlow, are you presenting or? I'm going to. Okay. Would you step up to the microphone, please, and introduce yourself? Good evening, um, Mayor Abrams and City Council. My name is Laura Pittner. I'm a board member of Emma Norton Services, um, which, as you are aware, provides transformational housing to women and families in the Twin Cities area as well as in Maplewood. In Maplewood, Emma, uh, Emma's Place is the property there, which is obviously the subject of this discussion tonight. So we did appeal these two fines specifically because the ordinance that's cited to support the fines is, um, I believe it's Ordinance 24, Section 6, um, states that in order for nuisance fines to be issued to a landlord in these circumstances, the conduct shall occur on the landlord's property. The issue that we're having, that we've been seeing, and that we're seeing here with respect to these two specific fines, are that these incidences occurred off property. And I'll just give you a couple of examples of the language from the ordinance where I'm coming to this conclusion that this is regarding off property or regarding on property conduct. So the ordinance states that for fines to be issued, um, they're issued to the owner of any property to which city officials must repeatedly respond to nuisance public safety service calls. So again, to the owner of any property to which the city officials respond. 
The ordinance also separately states that any fines notices provided to the record owner of the property shall reflect the nuisance conduct that previously occurred on the property. These fines notices that were issued to Emma Norton via Emma's place is regarding conduct that did not occur on Emma Norton property but off property. Furthermore, the actual letter that was sent to Emma Norton Services communicating these fines states that the city may impose a repeat nuisance service call fee upon the owner of private property if the city has rendered services to the property. The intent and express language of this ordinance reflects that it is properly applied when conduct occurs on the property. I believe this aligns with other city ordinances in the state where well, well, you will find that the on-property conduct is subject to nuisances in nuisance ordinances. But off-property conduct is not language that you'll find in other ordinances in other cities. I think there's a reason for that. I mean, I think it makes sense more so to hold landlords responsible for conduct that occurs on property than it does to ask landlords to take responsibility for its tenants when it's not on the property. Emma's Place doesn't have the tools to address off-property conduct like business owners or the city does. The city and business owners have the ability to trespass and enforce trespasses they have the ability to issue nuisance fines directly to the offenders. Emma's Place has the tool of eviction. But eviction for conduct that doesn't occur on the property is not something that's supported by the courts in the state of Minnesota. And what the city is asking Emma's Place to do in order to remedy these issues is to take action, adverse action against its tenants for being a nuisance elsewhere. And that is conduct that we've been advised is not something that we can engage in because it wouldn't be supported before a court of law. Reading this ordinance so broadly to apply to off-conduct property is also problematic because it asks Emma's Place to police the residents outside of the property. And it holds the residents of Emma's Place who are people of color and people of poverty potentially disproportionately impacted as to activities off the property as others in the community. We ask the city of Maplewood to respect, I respectfully request that you vacate these fines. One, because the ordinance itself only allows for nuisance violations as applied to on-property conduct, and two, because reading it so broadly goes beyond what Emma's Place has the ability to do within the bounds of the law. I think, do you have anything else you want to add? Or? Um, I think Ms. Brownlow, do you have anything else to add? Um, the only thing that we have to add is, um, I think as Laura indicated, I did have a uh, talk with our in-house, our council that we work with on eviction things, and he agreed that um, these situations typically get thrown out in, a, in housing court, and it's not likely that we will be able to win them. He also talked about there are have been communities and case law uh, recently. The city of Faribault um, had to pay a pretty egregious huge fine, something like to the tune of $650,000 for a similar case where they were trying to um, deal with people in terms of a nuisance violation process and they were found that they were violating some rights. So I just wanted to share I can that. see that there are lights here that council members have questions. I have a question for you, Ms. Brownlow, uh, just so that I understand uh, the point that you and, I'm sorry, Laura, I didn't get your last name? Pitner. Pitner. Uh, the point that you're making, you're not disputing that these two case numbers were Emma's Place kids, are you? No. Okay. Um, Mr. Beatty, I'm going to ask you to weigh in, if you would, please, and then we'll go to council questions. Sure. Madam Mayor, council, um, let me address the first issue. The um, city's ordinance was amended several months ago to make explicit 
the fact that uh, the the location of not only the the crime, if if that was uh, the the situation, but also the place to which the per, uh, perpetrators fled and and were harbored, was a place to which these fines could be attributed. The city's been doing that from the very beginning. I think that was part of the law. The I think the purpose of the amendment was simply to make clear that that could occur. Uh, there have been numerous, as you've heard the lieutenant say, there have been uh, a, a whole host of issues, uh, incidents of this. We did dismiss several that occurred shortly before the uh, change of the ordinance to, to frankly cut them some slack. The two, in fact, this was a, these two were a group, uh, part of a group of three, and one of those was dismissed. The other two were post change of the ordinance. But again, I think the ordinance was a clarification, not a substantive change. So I think the city has always had the right to, to do that. Thank you. You know, council members, I'm sorry, I did not I see was. who, okay, council member Knudsen was first. I, this is very interesting relative to the dynamics of a $500 fine or whatever it is, which I don't really care about, frankly. I'm just wondering what plan you have to rectify this concern. What are you going to do in your program or Emma's place or whatever the organization is capable of doing to um, stop this problem? And we've got, I mean, we've got crime that, uh, I mean, our, our community, our business owners, our citizens are just very concerned about crime as we go out and talk to them. And yet we have a location, we have a source, and all that. And what we want to do is hear from you. What do you have in mind? What's the plan? I did recently return a plan to Chief Beardeman, and I know we have a call scheduled for uh, later this week to talk about that plan and, and what we plan to do. Um, we have been working with the business owners. Um, we have been working internally with our staff. We have been working with parents. We've been working with the community. Uh, we have lots of activities that we are doing, but it's really hard to say what exactly is going to change in this context that we see in our world these days when we talk about youth mental health and we talk about situations happening on the news and crime rates rising everywhere. So it's not that we aren't making attempts to stop the behavior and to change things, but you know, we are um, still facing problems just like a lot of communities are. So we have, we have are in the process of bringing in new staff and more staff. Um, we are, uh, the council earlier this year helped us with approving uh, an application to get a youth case manager. Uh, I'm still waiting on all those contracting pieces to go through the federal government. It doesn't, it doesn't unfortunately happen very quickly. I've been waiting since, I think, July, or, or I'm sorry, uh, May, when I got the award notice. And um, we are trying to hire an in-house youth clinical consult to start working with youth on mental health. So we have a number of initiatives that we are doing. Okay, thanks. Ms. Brownlow, I had an opportunity to read the action plan. You were required to provide an action plan to the chief mm -hmm. of police. And one of the things that you included in your action plan was that you were talking to our local businesses around here mm -hmm. and telling them not to call the police when there is an incident, but rather to uh, call staff at Emma's place, which to me, that isn't an action plan. Uh, so I, I guess I'm a little bit concerned if you think that that's an action plan. That certainly isn't what, what I would envision as an action plan. Council members, I can tell you that I have actually, along with City Manager Coleman, I have seen the video from the Tumble Fresh Coin Laundry, and it is incredibly disturbing. Uh, it is absolutely clear. It's great, uh, you know, technological video that you can actually see who it is. Uh, and it's clear that their intent was to do damage to the property. Uh, and uh, it, it just was very, very disturbing to me that, that young kids were doing <clears throat> that. Uh, one of the, the, the um, 
case numbers that was, I believe, dismissed was actually on video as well, and City Manager Coleman and I saw that too. And it was a video of the kids from Emma's Place, once again, very clear on video, and they were throwing uh, rocks at a car that was uh, at, the at our local gas station. And to me, that was terrifying. Uh, that uh, someone who stopped to get gas in our community should be uh, subjected to that. And it was daylight, and uh, once again, very, very disturbing. Um, it is... Um, these issues are... Certainly, we're concerned about the kids at Emma's Place and the families at Emma's Place. But on the other hand, we are also concerned about innocent people who are going to the gas station and having rocks thrown at their vehicle. We're very concerned about our small businesses that are ju unfortunately juxtaposed to, to uh, being so close to Emma's place that they fall victim. Uh, and, and, and that is a, a huge concern for me because each one of these has an impact in the community. And it's not just uh, the kids at Emma's place. It's the, uh, the pain. You know, when I look at this list of harassment, assault, criminal damage to property, burglary, and theft, this is exactly what I talked to you about over a year ago when I tried to bring Emma's place and our local businesses together because we saw things escalating. And the five additional nuisance letters that have been sent to Emma's place, these all seem to be escalating instances, which are, again, of very big concern because each one of those impacted someone in the community, uh, an innocent victim in our community. And I think as a council, we have an obligation to protect everyone in our community. Um, you know... I know that um, you were requested to, required actually, to provide copies of the crime-free, drug-free lease addendums uh, to our city manager, and I don't believe that that has been done. Um, are you going to be doing that? I believe we are going to send an email tomorrow to try to set up a meeting with um, our council. I'm sorry. We're going to send. A, we're just going to discuss it with the city manager and our council. Okay. I'm not saying that we're not going to do it, do it. He just has some concern about what private information can be given out. Okay. You know, I, I myself reached out to you and, and I suggested uh, possibly working towards something and working with an organization called Circle of Peace. Mm -hmm. And I haven't heard anything back from you about that and whether or not that's something that Emma's Place wanted to, to participate in with the city. Um, I do know that I connected you with John Choi's office and with the Y, and I do know that the Y has agreed, despite the fact that there were a number of kids that were trespassed from the Y, that the Y has agreed that they would uh, um, provide some passes uh, to reward good behavior. Um, and I know that there's a meeting, I believe there's a meeting this week, because uh, in connecting you with John Choi, he has agreed to use some federal monies uh, to do funding and help uh, try to work with some programming. And I certainly hope and encourage you that that connection that we have made for you, that you will certainly use that. Um, my final comment is that when you were here back last spring, uh, this council asked you to provide us with a summary of your, what then was called safe summer. And to this date, we've never received anything. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, I, I do know from an email that you sent me that you've renamed <coughs> the program, mm -hmm. but we still, this council has never gotten that. Um, so I, ge I guess what I'm saying is that we have tried very hard to work with you. Um, I find it disappointing that um, of all of the things, all of the steps that and, and the, the, the outreach that we have tried to make, uh, that so far we have been unsuccessful with that. And it, uh, I guess my interpretation, my impression is that there's basically a complete lack of interest uh, 
from Emma's place and trying to work with the city. Finally, my last comment, I just thought about this, is that you know, I sent a letter as the mayor of Maplewood to each individual board member asking to meet and present at a board meeting, mm -hmm. and I have yet to hear anything from any board member of Emma's about coming and trying to talk about what we can do to work together. So that's very disappointing to me as we well. Have, we have a meeting scheduled this Friday with board leadership mm -hmm. to, to talk about scheduling that meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it hasn't been, it's not going to I'll happen. I'll look forward to that then. And mm -hmm. uh, can we still expect something in terms of a summary? You did, I believe, indicate that you would be providing a summary to the board about your summer program. We haven't seen that either. And as I said, challenges that we have faced with some staff turnover, as well as the contracting process required for our government funders have delayed some of that programming we intended to do. So the SHINE program, like I had talked about, it will actually start in September. And that was due to some government contract regulations that prevented them from starting earlier. You know, can I also just very, clarify, uh, can I clarify one piece about the sure. Y? Because I did meet with the Y and I met with the um, interim executive director and now we have a meeting set up with the associate right, executive I'm director. Right, I'm aware of that. Um, she did indicate just to know that, again, their philosophy similar to Emma's place and that we were working on was that it wasn't that they were extending um, memberships to kids for a reward for good behavior. They were actually extending memberships to the five children in question that are complete, that are committing most of these nuisance violations and have committed prop crimes on their property. They're actually trying to establish a relationship with them to bring them in and, and do it in a supported way. Um, that was one of the, in fact, um, you know, it had been made clear to me that uh, they did not want to continue to call the police when kids were doing some of those behaviors and even the situation that had happened that the police had been called where there was some food thrown in the parking lot. What was it told to me was that they had known, the kids had requested that some reservations be made in the system and that there was a staff error in that and the kids were angry about it. And what I was told was, again, we, that's sort of on us. It's kind of a shared responsibility. Adults make mistakes, kids make mistakes. And so that's some of the processes that we're going forward to try to forge those relationships. There are some other council members, and then I've got a couple of closing remarks as well. I think Councilmember Cave was next. Okay. Um, after what the mayor said, it's hard to say much more than the disappointment that I have in Emma's place. Um, the disappointment I have that, that it's mentioned that a juvenile will leave the property and go into the community and commit a crime, yet you talk about how community oriented you are. To me, that's, that, that doesn't make any sense. It's Can our officers are out there protecting the community. We're, we're all part of a huge community, and yet you're not. You say you are, and yet your actions show that you're not. You've been asked a bunch of times to come for things, like the mayor said, offering outreach programs, all this, no but yet our officers are not doing the right things to the juveniles that live there is what, you're, is what you're coming here and telling me by saying, no, our kids aren't doing them wrong. We can't do anything. Your kids are free reign once they leave your property is what I'm hearing said. Mm -hmm. You have no control. There's money that we gave you. There's all these excuses of why, why, why. It's like this, it's got to end. The buck stops with you guys. And you can't keep passing it on to everybody. Our citizens are paying cops to go after these kids, the repeat offenders, repeat offenders, and you do nothing about it. Our community doesn't find your group a part of the community because you're, you're not showing it. You're not being a citizen of the community. You're not helping police officers. You're not coming to city council and helping anything. You're being everything but. So I don't really find that you guys are very good stewards of our community right now. I'm very supportive. Councilmember Juniman. Thank you, Mayor. I almost don't know where to begin, but I guess I'll start with kind of an offshoot of what Councilmember Cave said. I find it, at the very least, annoying and a little further down the road, offensive that a board member would come to us and pick nits about the wording of the ordinance, which, by the way, is incorrect. 
attorney pointed out when the ordinance changed. So this is another case of trying to make an excuse. And when you make an excuse, it means you know that what's going on over there isn't appropriate, or you wouldn't try to excuse your way out of it. And I'm going to bring up one thing that I brought up. I think it was May, but it could be further along than that. There seem to be two units that are the most offensive from the greatest number of calls. Don't you have 13 units over there? Yes. Okay, what about the parents and kids in the 11 units that aren't doing these things? I taught high school long enough to know that the parents, who other parents who are trying to learn how to make families with their kids, and possibly some of the kids, are basically being terrorized by the ones you won't rein in. When she says it needs to stop, it needs to stop. But I'm saying you need to do it. Your mission is apparently missing to you both. What it looks like from the outside is a safety for allowing and maybe supporting delinquent behavior. If these parents are going to learn how to be parents and the kids are going to learn to listen to their parents occasionally and follow the rules of community, they have to be helped. You're not helping them. You're coming here and saying, well, just because they live, no, 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 no. That's right, the word is no. And after that, it's no more of this. Or are you going to then, if we're not satisfied with picking out our ordinance, go to some law that says we need to be different? Don't make excuses, please. Revisit your mission. I don't understand why the two units where this is going on incessantly, why those people are still there. I don't understand. And yes, I know there's poverty involved. Yes, I know all that stuff. But apparently they like living in a place like that where they have a fairly decent life and they can go out and do whatever they want in the community where they're located. Is that really the lesson you want to put forth to the families you are supposed to be helping? Please don't ever come in front of this group when I'm here and pick nits about some ordinance that you're not up to speed on. Why couldn't you come here and ask, how can we help? Our kids need help. We hear that all the time. But it seems like we're supposed to be the ones who provide the help by ignoring whatever behaviors they put on the community. That isn't how it works. We have another, I won't name it, but we have another supportive housing place for families just like yours, considerably larger. I have never heard an excuse from them. They don't blame the police for showing up. So right now, my money's on that group and not on you. I may as well say it. I want it to succeed. I'm the only one that was sitting up here when you took occupancy. I had great hopes. I took the tour. I talked to the then executive director several times. I thought this was great. Well, great has left the building. Sheltering two families where the kids are perpetually in trouble is not helping them. And if the only way anybody is going to learn anything in those families is to evict them, for Pete's sakes, do it. Or do you want the other 11 families to go down the tube too? Kids learn from watching those kinds of things. And if they see that the bad behavior is not dealt with, then why not try it? Quit trying to de deny that it ever happens. We have video of them doing these things. And the on-site, off-site thing, you're lucky I didn't crawl over the desk. Seriously? Seriously, we have video of these two places and you're nitpicking about on-site, off-site. I don't think your heart is in the right place either. Your heart belongs, your heart belongs with helping these families, not right. telling Excuse us me. to change. A council member is speaking. I will give you an opportunity when the council is done with our questions. Council but member I, Juneman. I just don't understand it. I don't. If you could make it clear to me why you think trying to get rid of our ordinance as an excuse for why that behavior goes on, I'd be fascinated to know what the answer was. But I... We're all about kids. We've been trying since what, January? Actually, my first meeting was early last summer, so it's over a year now. We want to help these families do better, but we're getting a lot of resistance from how you run the place. 
and I'm sorry, the plan that includes don't call the police, call us. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. We never take care of it, but call us anyway. Your kids, if they're going to succeed, will go into a world where they need to be able to live by certain rules. The last time I checked, society does not work with no laws. You are doing them a huge disservice. Let's just keep them warm, give them a nice place to live, and let them do whatever they please. That's a dandy lesson for people that at the age of 18 will be considered adults. We are concerned about what happens to those people. And frankly, I'm tired of being blamed for us trying to help you. Don't do it anymore, please. Until you people look yourselves in the mirror and admit that part of this is your responsibility, we're talking about nothing. And for heaven's sakes, if you really expect us to want to help anymore when you say keep your cops away, the mayor's right. And she's right. You don't want to participate in our community. You want to live the way you want to live in this community. That is not works for anyone. We want to help. Our police department has tried outreach hundreds of times. And yes, they're going to go when somebody calls, whether it's on your premises or 500 feet off your premises, and there's a crime going on. Seriously? You want us to go like this? Welcome to the real world. If anyone, inside or outside of your establishment, needs help, they can call the police. That's a right they have by living here. And you have no right to tell them not to, unless you're, again, in the business of disservice. If this keeps up, I really feel that those kids over there don't have a prayer. And you can bear the, the guilt for it. Thank you. Councilmember Villa Vicencio. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as somebody who has worked with marginalized communities all my life, I do really care about the kids at Emma's Place as I care about all the kids in Maplewood. And, you know, as someone who has worked in community for a long time, I reached out to the people in the community that I know of that could possibly give supports. And I've checked in with them multiple times, and you have, you have not um, called any of them back. And they are offering help. And this includes nonprofits, nonprofits excuse me, and this includes churches. They're ready and willing to help. And if you say you're being part of the community, you have to accept help maybe from people that you're not used to helping. And so I'm extremely disappointed that we haven't gotten any farther in, in helping all the youth of Maplewood because um, there are people who are trying to reach out and give help and support, and they're not getting anything back. They're not getting calls back from y'all. So um, I, hope that can, I hope that can change. Thank you. Councilmember Knudsen. You know, I am listening to this. I, for about 40 years ago, I ran a residential treatment center for delinquent boys. And it, it appears to me that you guys are in way over your head. Whatever happened, um, where someone convinced you to take on uh, difficult families, difficult kids, you are way over your head. So you need everything in your power to get out of this. There's no way on earth these kids are going to do well in your environment. And I, I, I think you just need to recognize that. You haven't offered a single intervention that makes sense. And I know it's tough out in the juvenile justice system, especially now. But these kids need an appropriate interdiction. Um, they need somewhere uh, that consequences are appropriate. Uh, otherwise, it's just hopeless. And uh, I think you're in over your head. And these folks here uh, all around this room are going to try and help you get out of it. Because the whole idea of blaming the ordinance is just uh, insulting. Um, these kids deserve better than that. And whatever happened for you guys to get in over your head, uh, you need to get out as soon as possible. Thank you. My last comment, and then we'll give you an opportunity to respond and see if the council has anything else to say, is that uh, I thoroughly concur with everything that my council members have said. Um, over this last year, I believe that the city has taken numerous steps to help 
Emma's Place, to support Emma's Place, to direct services. We unanimously voted to support your application for funds from Ramsey County. Uh, you know, I myself have connected you with the church, with uh, John Choi's office, with the Y. Uh, I, you know, we have tried in so many different ways. And what we are seeing is your kids terrorizing our community. The city manager and I met with Lieutenant Duga and uh, another, our community engagement officer, and I watched videos that were of Emma's kids terrorizing people that come into Maplewood. I was scared watching it as to the kind of conduct that we're seeing. And when I met first with Emma's Place early last summer, along with our businesses, I explained the reason for my meeting was that I was very concerned about the escalating behavior. I was concerned for the protection of Emma's Place kids, and I was concerned about the employees, the small business owners, the customers that come into CVS and Starbucks and the laundromat and McDonald's and, I mean, PetSmart, Pet all over. I'm concerned about people being able to come into our community. We want to be a welcoming community, and we want to make sure everyone is safe. And we expect that you will help us with that. That is really your mission, and I would agree, whoever commented up here, that you are not serving your mission. You are not serving these children. And I told you last summer that I was afraid that this would be a lost generation of kids unless there was something, some changes that were made. You can tell that we are all very passionate about here, and we up here, and we have tried numerous ways to try to come alongside Emma's Place and help and we have got nothing but pushback or no returned calls. You have not responded to the requests that we've made. Uh, it's, it's very disappointing. And, and also, quite frankly, I think what you're hearing up here, too, is frustration because you are here where I look at, there were employees at CVS. They're making minimum wage, and the kids from Emma's Place go over there and terrorize them. They were trespassed from there. Those employees have a right to go to work at CVS. The tumble fresh coin laundry, criminal damage to property. You know, that's a small business. They're offering a service to families who don't have washing service, washing machines and dryers in their residence. They come to tumble fresh. We've been telling you for over a year, something's got to change. This is very, very disturbing. And the terror has got to stop. We are committed to that as a council. I'm committed to that as a mayor. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us? Yeah, I just would like to clarify that Emma's Place is interested in working with the council and improving the situation. The fact that we're here today to discuss a specific ordinance doesn't mean that's not the case. This isn't meant to be disrespectful. This is meant to talk about the legal parameters that we perceive that are issues with the application of this ordinance and how it limits the organization, whether or not you agree or disagree with it. That's a very narrow conversation. This bigger conversation about how can we fix mm -hmm. this, how can we make things better, what can we do, we want to have with you. This tool, this ordinance, is just one part of it. So please understand that we didn't mean to be disrespectful to anyone today. We meant to address one limited, narrow issue. Councilmember Cave. Um, what's upsetting with what you just said to me, how upset, I, how upset I am hearing it, is because it took the police to give you a ticket to come to this council. Nobody's come here in the last, what, four or five months that we've asked you to. We've had an open door, the mayor's had phone calls, we've invited board members to meet with everyone, zero, zero conversation. So now you show up and you're gonna fight a ticket and you're saying you're here to have a conversation. I don't buy it. I don't buy that. Councilmember Juneman. 
I have a question actually for you, Laura. Did it, was this your first thought was to consult your council on the ordinance or did you have another thought that came first? Because if your first reaction was to go seek legal counsel, then I can say that's what's wrong across the street. You don't operate anyone's real human life by talking to a lawyer, which ultimately looks like you're trying to worm out of something because our ordinance is not right. If you truly mean what you just say, said, you should never have brought that up tonight. If you want to talk to us about how to fix this, then let's talk about how to fix it. Several of us said that tonight. We're not saying we have all the answers, but we're pretty sure you don't appear to have any. How many times has the mayor inquired? We don't see anything. I taught high school long enough to know that if you don't go into every single hour of your day totally prepared, they'll eat you alive. That's a teenage tendency. Absolutely. So if you don't have a program that's more than, oh, we're going to get more staff, oh, we wanted to, but we didn't get the federal money, now I know what's wrong because you don't have a program. I mean it when I say every single solitary hour. When I was teaching, if I wasn't prepared for one hour of a, cl of a class, they would have eaten me alive. It's their pastime. And they live over there. They have to know that someone cares enough about them to give them consequence. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you've lived in your car or you live in a nice house. Life has consequences. And it looks to me like what's going on over there is nobody has any. And if you have the two troublesome units, you need to start there. And if the parents don't get the message, you invite them to leave. Because I know there must be many other families who need your kind of help. But you don't just allow this to go <coughs> on so everybody can watch it and go, <laughs> oh well, Maple, it's picking on them. Stop it. I don't know how long you've been on the board, Laura, but I was over there when it first opened. I hung out several days with Sherry McAdam. Okay? I know what that place is supposed to be able to do. Do I think kids have gotten more difficult since it opened? You bet they have. But are you still in the kid business? I think you're supposed to be. Then your job just got harder. So then when people like the police chief and his, all of his officers and people like the city manager and the mayor offer help. And then all you can come back and do is basically spit in our faces and say, well, you're picking on us. Really? My heart goes out more to those kids tonight than it has in the past. Kids need leadership. You're not giving them any. You're giving them silent excuses, oh, but you come over here and verbalize them. Never mind the ordinance, never mind the fees, never mind you haven't got your federally funded staff person yet. What are you gonna work with today with what you have and the kids you have? Because that's what everybody's charge is when there are kids involved. You have to be prepared and you do with what you have. I, I, I can't even verbalize, it makes me just unbelievably unhinged to think of what used to go on over there and what isn't going on now. You need to self-examine. I'm not being cute about this. You sit down tonight when you go back and say, what is our mission with these families? Because you have one. It's horribly important. It's probably more important than the people who live up, quotation marks, normal life with a normal family structure. Your job is bigger and more important. You have people here offering to help you. Please quit blowing it. The rest of our community is not able to tolerate this. And you worry about, and I think the favorite word in January was profiling your kids. Well, you're helping them to do that. If their address goes back to over there, people go, uh-huh. Help them with behaviors where they won't be the people that these people expect to be doing wrong things. I, please, please, please get your act together. Please get a program that makes some sense. Please take to heart for every hour you're in front of a kid, 
you have to be prepared. And that ain't an easy job. I'm not saying it is, but it's the business you're in. And you need the support of the board. So your job is to go back to the rest of the board and say, they need help. How can you help them? That's what you're supposed to do when you're on the board of a nonprofit like Emma's Place. We need you to do your jobs, and we are willing to help you. That's the ultimate, just absolutely the ultimate mission here. Please think about it. May I respond? I Mayor, would suggest Mayor, that um, your comments about uh, the ordinance are about, in my mind, they pair up with part of your action plan where you have asked our local businesses to not call the police. And if I need to go and talk to the local businesses and tell them you must call the police when there is some type of criminal activity going on in your property because we want everyone to be safe. And when I see this list of the instances that have happened since these two, I can't believe that you would ever suggest to a local business owner that if they're getting, if someone at their business is getting harassed, either an employee or a customer, or someone is getting assaulted, or there is criminal damage to property, or burglary, or theft, that that's something that you want the business owners to call you about and not call the police? That, in my mind, is unconscionable. It's unsafe, and it's not the way that we should be living here in Maplewood. That, quite frankly, when I read that, I was offended <clears throat> that that would that? ever be suggested to not exercise their right to, be, to receive protection from the city. Can I, can I please respond to that? Yes, you can. So I have the letter that I sent Chief Beardman here in front of me, and um, I think part of the challenge with this process is that um, I sent a two-page letter with a seven-point bullets of different issues that we are trying to face and trying to work on with the city and different and businesses and the police about our collaborative relationship. And yet, the essence of what your reaction is is to boil it down to one sentence. So the paragraph that you're res responding to is, I said, we would ask that the police support our efforts to establish more collaborative relationships with neighbors and local businesses. This includes providing them with Emma's Place property manager contact information and asking that they contact us directly with any concerns. I didn't ask them to not call the police. I followed it up with saying, even if they have contacted the police initially, at minimum, we would like to follow up to see if there's an additional information or strategic planning we can do to address what is happening. Nowhere in that situation did I say, don't call the police. That's the interpretation and of our businesses. And let I, me ask you I, this. I, 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 in I, terms of follow-up, I get to ask the question. Sure. This is our hearing. My question to you is this. The Tumble Fresh Coin Laundry incident that happened uh, June 5th, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, tell me, what have been the consequences for the children? I saw them. They're on video. You can see their faces. You know who they are. Our police department knows who they are. What were the consequences that they experienced as a result of going into that business and damaging that and trying to damage the camera system as well? What there, were the consequences? There was a restorative justice meeting set up between the business owners of Tumble Fresh Laundry and the entire family. They met. Uh, I have an email that's from Tumble Fresh Laundry that indicates they were happy to meet the family, that they were hopeful that the intervention would work. I'm not saying that it did work, but it was followed up on. We did do things. We are continuing to work with the pam family and those children. I don't have the details in front of me of what was agreed to in the restorative justice agreement around the broken property, but I can certainly get that to the entire council. So again, it is not a situation that it was just blown off and that it wasn't addressed. This is what we're talking about. We have reached out to businesses. We are trying to work with them. I met with staff this afternoon. I know they have a plan of talking with children and families about the fact that local businesses are not a place for the children to be. If they can't behave appropriately, they are not allowed to go. It doesn't mean that we can get kids to not cross the street. We can't do link arms and like 
not get them to go across the street, but it doesn't mean that we're blowing it off and we're not following through on things. Councilman Juneman has another question or comment. Um, I understand the restorative justice meeting. That's a good start. But what's the follow-up consequence for the children that she's asking about? And that's what I'm saying. I can continue to go back and get that information from the staff. Okay, that's... And we have continued to do that. And that's what I'm saying. We've had relationships with Starbucks. We have worked with their staff over and over. We, we've hosted. They called us. I know there was an incident over the weekend. I know what's going on. It's not that we're not preventing it. Ms. Brownlow, I think that you can understand, though, given the fact that you never did provide a summary for <clears throat> what's your plan for the summer to make it different. You've never provided that. You have not provided the crime-free, drug-free lease addendums that were requested. You never responded to me about the Circle of Peace move, uh, movement. Uh, there are just so many instances where even standing here before and saying you were going to do something and you don't do it. So I guess we're just going to have to wait and see uh, and wait for your response. Um, but we don't have a whole lot of confidence in it. And I think that that is based on our experience and all of the, the efforts that we have extended to try to work with them as police. So council members, do we have anything else? Because I know we do have other agenda items. Okay, so at this point we do have a motion. Uh, the motion is to adopt the resolution supporting a Minnesota Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. I turned the page, I'm sorry. The motion to direct staff to prepare a resolution with findings of fact and conclusions consistent with the staff report and other evidence for adoption at the city council meeting of August 8th, 2022. I'll make that motion. Sorry. Moved by Abrams, seconded by Knudsen. The motion to direct staff to prepare the resolution uh, of findings and of fact and conclusions consistent with the staff report and other evidence for adoption. Is there any further discussion? Council Member Juneman. Is there a way to make that more clear for these two ladies? Exactly what does that mean? What do we need? What do we expect to see? I don't know. I know that. So are they going to, in the meantime, also get back to us with what she said? There are consequences that they... <coughs> I mean, we can get what the, the police are going to give us, but I want to know what they do about it on their side. Because I asked, what do you, you know, and she said restorative justice, but she couldn't tell me what. Right. I think my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, was that she was going to provide something to the council, which I responded, you've said that before, mm -hmm. and we never got anything. So we'll wait and see. We'll look forward to uh, the consequences spelled out very clearly as to what uh, the restorative justice consequences were for the criminal damage to property over at uh, Tumble Fresh. Okay, does that help? That helps. Any further discussion? There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you. thank you. Council members, moving on. Now we move on to the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development demolition loan application. Mr. Thompson, this is yours. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, earlier this year, as we've been reviewing, I think it was at an EDA meeting early in the year, the first meeting of the year, um, as we talked about uh, the purchase agreement for the 1375 Frost property, as well as um, soliciting development interest for the Moose Lodge property, the EDA at that time expressed an interest in getting ahead of demolition of those two structures, noting that they're in very rough shape, they present a public safety hazard, and are frankly um, uh, provide a disservice to the community um, in that area. And so um, what we've identified is uh, the Department of Employment and Economic Development at the state provides a loan program to upfront the cost of that demolition um, and then potentially would become forgivable. 50% of that could become forgi forgivable. So we just wanted to identify a potential grant opportunity to solicit some funding for the demolition um, uh, for both of those properties. So that's what we intend to submit. Uh, that application is due next week. And as part of that, they ask for a resolution of support from the council uh, that you are supportive of the application and the grant and demolition of those structures. So it, the application has to be a city. I think we're competitive. I mean, I can say this, but I think we're competitive for the grant. I, there's certainly no, no guarantees, but the program, you see the criteria in the staff report. Um, 
they we well meet the criteria that are in there. But it's also they ha the properties have to be owned by the city, um, and the city has to be the applicant for the grant. So we've positioned positioned ourselves well to meet a lot of the eligibility criteria for this program. So with that, um, the other piece I was going to miss, I know when I was back in reviewing the notes from that meeting, I was uh, remiss in that you had asked to put a development sign up on that property. So um, we are working on getting that done expeditiously now to provide a, a sign that there's a future development on the Moose, and I'm sorry, talking about the Moose Lodge property, getting a future uh, future development sign out there. We'll have a link to a website, a quick URL, just so we can keep it updated as the demolition grant process works, whether the demolition moves forward, the solicitations, we can keep people regularly updated. We'll have a link to that. So we'll get that out as soon as we possibly can. So Thank with you that, for that, yeah, Mayor and Council, I am happy to answer any questions um, on this proposal. Thank you for the presentation. When I was reading this, I actually thought that the qualifications for the loan were written for Us. those properties. <laughs> uh, they, it just yeah. seems to fit right. very well. It so, uh, Councilmember Juniman, you have a question? Yes. <laughs> well, if, if they needed any further um, help with their appeal, all they need to do is send them a picture of the Gladstone House. And I, I was thinking maybe over the weekend when I read this that maybe we would have a cheaper way of taking that down. I think if we all went over there and just blew real hard, <laughs> it would go over. <laughs> but thank you for applying for this grant. And yes, I agree with you. I think those properties make us great candidates. Yeah. Plus all that we are doing in the area, they see what we do when we have the chance. Exactly. No further questions. Council members, is there a motion? I, I move the resolution supporting a Minnesota Department of Economic yeah. Employment and Economic Development Demolition loan application. Second. Oh. Moved by Juniman, seconded by Knudsen. I heard him first. Uh, the motion to approve the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development demolition loan application. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. We have one final. Yeah. Agenda item, the Parkway Drive Improvements uh, City Project 2109. Mr. Love, this is yours. Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, so tonight, there's uh, two items related to this one for you to consider. The first one is receiving bids and awarding a contract. If, we, if you proceed with that, then the next one would be entering into an agreement, a cooperative agreement with Ramsey County as part of this project. So on the on your screen here, we have a picture of Parkway Drive, which is a county road. This picture was taken at the intersection of May Hill and Parkway Drive, looking northeast towards Highway 36. In the bottom left corner, you can just make out a little bit of concrete. So this is where the road switches from concrete to asphalt going north. And I'll, I'll show you kind of why that's important here. So just to kind of go over the project a little bit, um, the Maple Hills, uh, uh, townhome uh, development here had a large basin that was created uh, for stormwater and in this area here in yellow you can see those are storm storm sewer lines and so what what they created was a whoops <laughs> uh, was a force main and a lift station so they could pump the storm water down in the pond however that force main ended at Parkway Drive and didn't connect to anything because <laughs> there was no storm sewer out in the road there. So what we've had to do over the last couple of years is to extend a hose from the, um, whoops, this blue line here is essentially where we'd run a hose along Parkway Drive to when we had to do the um, storm water. The problem with that is, well, it's probably not the best way no, to go about it, it, right? No, we get it. Um, I don't think you have to tell us the problem. Yeah. It's kind of obvious. So. So that's where this project started at. Um, Parkway Drive is a county road. Um, working with the county, they said, hey, this would be a good opportunity for us to improve the pavement condition of the asphalt section. So they got on board with that. And then as we worked with, um, through the design plan, due to the proximity of the force main and the existing water main, St. Paul, uh, St. Paul Regional Water said, hey, that's a section of water main that we'd like to replace. So that kind of got lumped in. And then the next part is you can kind of see it down here in, in green along the <laughs> northwesterly side of Parkway Drive. Um, the county received a request from the townhome development for pedestrian facilities to be able to access the, um, the existing bus stops down here on Larpenter Avenue. And 
uh, there's some people there that rely on public transportation and without, without um, sidewalks there, they have to kind of walk either on the edge of the road or up on the boulevard. Um, so we also incorporated that into a project um, with the hope that we can accomplish a number of goals. So we, we had a bid opening. Uh, we had four uh, bids received. Uh, there was quite a range in, in these numbers, as I think kind of indicative of the environment we're in. Um, the low bid was 485,000 and the uh, high bid was 660,000. Our engineer's estimate was around 394. So it's about 92,000, the low bid was about 92,000 above the uh, engineer's estimate. So when we look at that funding, what that breaks down to, um, there was about $289,000 that would be the city's responsibility. Um, that it would be uh, funded through the Environmental Utility Fund and the Street Revitalization Fund. Ramsey County would be uh, funding about 33% of the project and St. Paul Water would be covering all the costs uh, related to the water main, so about 22%. So this budget number here represents the contract amount um, engineering and design, uh, inspections, and testing, as well as a 10% contingency um, on there. So the project schedule, if the project was awarded, um, we would award it tonight and then begin construction in August and complete this project in the fall. So it, it still would take place in this construction season. The cooperative agreement with uh, Ramsey County establishes the responsibilities of the city and the county as it relates to this project. City staff and the city attorney has reviewed that agreement. So as I mentioned, the two motions before you, uh, approval of resolution receiving bids and awarding a construction contract for the base bid plus bid alternate one. I forgot to mention bid alternate one was the St. Paul uh, water cost. Uh, they asked us to have that as a bid alternate because of the high prices we were receiving on our other projects. They wanted to make sure that the project could still go forward if they had to back out. Fortunately, the prices came in where they're comfortable with it. So that's why we're recommending the base bid plus bid alternate one. And the low bid was for Bituminous Roadways Incorporated. And again, as I mentioned, uh, we do recommend entering into the agreement with Ramsey County if the project is awarded. And with that, I'm available for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Love? Hmm. I don't see any questions. We have two motions then, council members. Would someone like to make the first one? I move to approve the attached resolution receiving bids and awarding a construction contract for the base bid plus bid alternate one for the Parkway Drive Improvement City Project 21-09 to Bituminous Roadways Incorporated. Is there a second? Second. Moved by Juniman, seconded by Villa Vicencio. Uh, I won't read the whole thing. City clerk sent. It's right from the book. Uh, but uh, to approve the attached resolution, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. The second motion. I further move to enter into a cooperative agreement with Ramsey County, which makes me nervous, and further authorize the mayor and city manager to sign the attach a cooperative agreement. Minor revisions as approved by the city attorney are authorized as needed. There is second. Second. Moved by Juniman, seconded by Knudsen. The motion to enter uh, into a cooperative agreement is written in our council packet. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes as well. I'm sure the residents will be happy that we won't have to go aye. out there and use that it kind of looked like a garden hose uh, across the road there. Uh, I'm glad that we're going to be able to get that resolved. Fairly. So Fairly. thank you, fellow council members. Uh, and with that, we are through our agenda, and we are adjourned. <laughs>